Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we are going into JavaScript. We are digging into that and we will, oh, like I said, this is a tutorial. So I'll show from the bottom up, yeah, how should we actually deal with JavaScript? What kind of tools should be used? And how does the language work? If you go to Wikipedia, what is JavaScript? Uh, it is a programming language. You'll probably know that. You probably also know that it has something to, to the World Wide Web to, uh, to do. That whenever you go to a web page, you have uh, probably seen that there are some JavaScript errors on some web pages, um, and that, that might be the only thing you know about JavaScript. But it is code that runs on the client machines, and they run, um, and they are. it is very often used for web solutions, but it can also be used for other, th other things. And um, I'll, I'll get back right back into that. Uh, but first of all, why should we learn JavaScript? And that is one of the reasons is that it is, it is the most popular language uh, on Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow, they create these uh, developer surveys uh, once per year. And if you look at the 2022, then you can see that the, yeah, the most popular uh, programming language right now is actually JavaScript. And it's because it's so easy both to learn, to write, and to deal with in general. Um, let us go back to some theory right here. JavaScript is a, a language that is um, uh, dynamically typed. That means that you can create, uh, you can change the type of your variables on the fly. It is also something that will be considered an inter in, uh, interpretable, uh, interpretable um, language, uh, which means that uh, it is actually just read line by line and executed. But this is actually not right. Uh, this is not true anymore because the the engines are actually compiling this uh, this. Uh, JS file, so it is faster for the engine to, to handle the, the JavaScript afterwards. Um, yeah, so, but the, the JavaScript, it, it needs to run inside an engine. And the browse, browsers have, have, have uh, yeah, they have those engines, and we are dealing with Firefox has something called SpiderMonkey, the Safari has something called JavaScript Core, and the Chrome has an, an, an engine named V8. Then there's something uh, that is uh, uh, quite new, no, not it's not new, new, but it's uh, it's newer than the origin of JavaScript, and that is Node, which is a C++ wrapper of the V8 engine. This means that we can actually uh, not not only use JavaScript for uh, for web pages and for, for stuff that you run inside a browser, we can actually use it as a real programming language, and it can solve real uh, real uh, yeah, real, real problems, and it can run inside this uh, Node engine. And there's a huge community behind this, so there's a lot of libraries, um, and it's quite easy um, to, yeah to, to download and use these uh, libraries with something called npm and node. npm is Node Package Manager, and Node is the engine itself, uh, which is a C++ wrapper of the original V8. Uh, usually, we would actually have an HTML page, where in, inside that HTML page, in the bottom of that, that, we will actually have some kind of a script tag that says that please add this uh, JavaScript that we have right here. And then when the browser reads the HTML page, then it actually would, uh, would run the JavaScript part inside its own JavaScript engine. This mean, also means that the um, uh, there is a standard now, uh, ES, uh, ES, uh, ES, uh, ES6, uh, ES6, and that is uh, a standard that these uh, engines uh, have uh, adopted. But there will still be uh, minor differences between the engines, um, yeah, from Firefox to Safari to to Chrome. There will be there are, there are minor differences, but they are getting uh, smaller and smaller. These differences because of these standards that uh, the industry tries to set. And we can just, uh, what was the name of that uh, standard again? Let us just uh, go down here and see. It was, just search for standard. It is right here. The ECMA uh, International as a starting point for a standard specification to uh, that all browser, all vendor browsers should actually use. But that was, uh, yeah, that was when JScript uh, arrived uh, much earlier. And here we have the ECMA script 6, which was um, a formalized uh, uh, standard uh, of, uh, of the language in 2015. Um, so enough about the, the theory. We now know that JavaScript is a programming language. We now know that it's, uh, it's, it's, it's supposed to run inside an engine, either uh, in a browser or either in uh, something called Node.js. Is it difficult to install Node.js? No, it is definitely easy to install Node.js. You just go to Node.js.org and then you go to then you just press download or install or get get it get it as fast or something like that. And then you will get, go to this page right here that uh, says EN for English and then download for for download. And then you just choose your uh, 
installer for uh, uh, operating system that you use. Um, you, there's also something called NVM, Node Version Manager. That is, if your company uh, uses multiple versions of Node for different projects, then I would definitely recommend you to use NVM instead of uh, instead of just uh, installing Node. This, this NVM can actually install multiple versions of Node and have them installed side by uh, side by side on your uh, operating system. And uh, but if you just need one version, latest and greatest, then you just choose uh, fr- from the side right here. We can actually run JavaScript inside a browser. We just press F12 if you're in a Chrome browser, and I, I have zoomed a lot in right here. Usually you would start with something like this. You just hold control and then you, you run the, the mouse scroll wheel and then you can zoom in and uh, just make sure that you're on the console tab right here. F12 is how we go to the uh, developer tools if you are uh, inside Chrome. And you can, of course you can always find it uh, right here. More tools, developer tools. You can also press control shift I, then you would also end up right here. Um, yeah, or F12. So let us look at the console because we can actually we actually have access to the JavaScript engine if we just open up a browser and then go, go to the console right here and then that means that I can actually start by declaring some uh, a variable if I want to let's uh, my var equal to uh, um, hello world like this and then I always end all of my lines with a semicolon like this and then uh, then I actually uh, got this answer right here and if, if I write, write my var now then I can actually see that I have uh, yeah that the, the response was actually hello world so that means that the content for for my var was actually uh, hello world I can also do it nicely with the console doc and then I'll say my var and then end with semicolon I could also add something in front the uh, content of my var is and something like this. This is called concatenation. So when I add two strings together, that's called concatenations. And we, here we see the result. The content of my var is hello world. And I can also do some math, like three times three. What is that? That is nine. Okay. Thank you very much for that response. T- 10 times 100. What is that? That is 1000. Cool, cool, cool. So I can do a lot of things right here. Um, I can also, of course, do logical operations. I can, I can also create booleans, like... Um, um, let us just create a constant right now. Before we, we use the let, that is if I want the... That is, uh, that is if I want my variable actually to change the value or and or type, then I will use use let. If I use const, that means that then I will... The value needs to be the same all, all the time. So I will say const, and then is uh, js fun, and I will say that set that to true, like this. And then if I get the if I get the variable, then I'll get true right here. Uh, if I try to change this now, and I've tried to set it to, set it to something else, and I set it to, to maybe five or four, then I'm not allowed to do that because it is a constant variable. But my var, I can set that to something else. I can set that to to to, to false or whatever I want to, right here because it is, uh, I chose let instead of const. So there, there are those two uh, ways of defining a new variable by using let or const. In the old days, there was also something named var. So you might see some examples out there that uses var. Don't do that, just use let or const. One of one of those, that, that is the, the, the new best practice, so to say. Uh, if you just want to say see that my var also works, then we can just say if my var2 equals two. And I can also use double quote, uh, double quotes if I want to. But the best practice, according to Google, according to Google is to use single quotes unless you have a good reason for using double quotes. So, but I'll, ju- I'll just use double quotes now, not right now, so you can actually see that it works. Uh, double quotes. Um, it's not best practice. And of course, I also forgot my semicolon, but uh, actually the, the, the engine is quite uh, nice uh, with that. It, it does not complain that much. It actually solved it anyway. You can also see whenever I get the result, then it is in single quotes like this. So this is my var2 right now that I defined with the var instead of the let. But uh, yeah, new best practices use var, uh, use let and const. So that is variables. Now, uh, that, that is how to use, this is how to use the browser, but you can see it's not that nice to sit in the browser and actually do JavaScript code. It's a bit, usually you would actually like to have an integrated development vi- environment, IDE, you want to have some place to sit and write those lines so they don't just disappear when if you close your browser. And that is exactly why you want to use VS Code, Visual Studio Code. You can also use WebStorm. Um, I definitely prefer VS Code, but I've also used WebStorm. It is also quite good. Um, VS Code just it has a huge community. There's a lot of plugins. 
And the plugin that we are going to install, or we already have installed today, is called Live Server, so we can actually, um, so we can create some HTML pages, and then we can uh, we can serve that on my local machine. So VS Code plus, uh, yeah, VS Code and WebStorm, we're going to try them out, both of them. But if you don't want to spend too much time on, on IDs in the beginning, if you just want to learn uh, VS Code, uh, JavaScript, then use the VS Code. It is the, I would say, the, it is the one that is that's the best one. JavaScript is used inside these JavaScript frameworks. This means that when you're done with learning JavaScript, it does not matter, mean that you can actually create a cool website yet, but it means that you know the foundation and the fundamentals, so you can actually start using a framework like Vue.js. Vue.js is the one that is the easiest one to learn. React is the one that is used the most, but and it's quite cool also, and it's also, it's also quite easy to learn, but it's a little bit more difficult to learn than uh, Vue.js. Then we have Angular. It seems to be a little bit outdated and doesn't have a big support, uh, as much support as uh, React or Vue, but there's something called Angular IO. There's, a, there's also the old Angular, which is Angular JS. Do not dig into that. That is the kind of, um, that is, you will, you will see fewer and fewer assignments with, uh, yeah, that, that uses that. A few of your projects will use Angular JS because if you want to use Angular, then you, you definitely want to use Angular IO instead of Angular JS. All of these languages can use, be used with something called TypeScript. TypeScript is so we can actually have type safety when we create when we write our JavaScript. So whenever you think, okay, now I know everything about JavaScript, I'm pretty cool at that, then definitely learn TypeScript as the next thing. And then as the next thing again, learn one of these web frameworks right here, Vue, JS, React, or Angular. Just a little tip. So now let us go to VS Code, because of course I already have my VS Code right here. I'll just close one of my files right here. I've created one folder. I've opened up this folder and I've already created some files. I will actually delete the content of uh, of these files and then create them again just so you can actually see um, see what they happen, uh, see what they, how easy it actually is. First, we need to press the little uh, icon right here where, with, the, with the boxes because we need the extension named Live Server. I've already installed it, but I want to show you that it is actually right here. So Live Server. There are also other uh, servers right there that can actually uh, pretend to be a HTTP server and then uh, serve your HTML page uh, when you are testing your HTML uh, page, including your JavaScript, of course. Try to see how popular it is. It almost got five stars right here. It has uh, four and a half, and then it has uh, yeah, 24 million uh, downloads right here. It's quite cool. As I said, there are also others that can be used. I've already installed it, and this means that I, um, yeah, that I can actually just create my HTML file, which I have right here. So this is just a new file, and I'm going to delete all of the content just so you can see how easy it is. You just um, uh, write an exclamation mark like this, and then you get a default HTML page right here. I, I have a header, and I have a body. So I'll just set the header, a title of this he header right here. Um, hello, demo. So like this, and now we set a title. The title is going to be shown in the top of your browser. Then we have the body right here. It is best, pro uh, let us write something in the body so it's not empty. So we write some, hello. Um, this is a cool demo. And we are learning JavaScript. And all of these HTML tags, if you don't know HTML, then look up some other videos about that. Um, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to into that today. Um, this is some context, some context right here. And then you want to add your JavaScript. You want to add that in the bottom of your HTML file. And why, why, why in the bottom? That is because the browser will read this and present this line by line. So this means that if you actually created an error in a JavaScript as the first line, then you will not see anything. Then we just have a blank page. Um, and that is not no fun, of course. Uh, it, it is more fun. Of course, it's also no fun to it. It's not no fun to have an error at all. But uh, of course, it's more fun to see a little bit of text on your screen, and then you can see, okay, what's going on, and okay, and then the, the script uh, then will fail in this line right here, and then uh, everything after that will actually uh, not be shown. Um, so that's why you always want to create your, to place your script in the end of the body section, which we have right here. So I need to say it's source equal to, and then I've created a JavaScript file named myjs, and it's just a plain file, and you don't need to have any content. You actually see it's a bank content right now. There's no no content inside it. Um, so let us try to actually, um, yeah, let us try to create some uh, JavaScript. The first thing that you always want to do is to print something out in the uh, in the console, console log, like this, and then we say hello one two three four. And now we actually have a piece of JavaScript. We can also create some links. We can also write alerts. That is also something that is usually used as hello. 
one, two, three, four, and a lot of numbers right there. I end each line with a semicolon. And then I right click on the HTML page and then I say open with live server. Open with live server right here. So this means that now I have my own website. Oh, wow, cool. Hello. And then there one a lot of numbers. So this is what's the alert box. And here we have here we get the HTML right there. And let us look at the JavaScript. Here we have hello, one, two, three, four. That is quite cool. So the cool thing about the server is also if I add some stuff like here, let us say that we change some stuff, save it, then I can go directly uh, to my page and then it will actually be, be reloaded automatically here. Now I got this text out as a console right here. If I have the same text printed out in, in the console uh, multiple times, then it will not be shown multiple times. You'll just see a small number beside it. So let us try to actually um, let, let us try to print this out twice. I'll remove the alert box because it's annoying. You should never use, if you're in doubt, you should never use that alert box or anything. Uh, so here now we see, to, okay, I would not have ex uh, Oh, it's because it's two different lines. Yeah, it, it needs to be the same line. So we need to create a for loop right here. So let us just create a for loop. So here we have the for loop with an index. And this, if you're used to Java, then this would uh, definitely look, then this would definitely look uh, normal to you. So I'll just move this line up here. And I'll say print this out. And then we should say that this should be printed out maybe 10 times. So we want, um, so this means that we've now print the same line out right here uh, 10 times, and let us see uh, how that uh, turns out. Look, now we got this 10 in, in the little left of my uh, console in my browser. Then I get this 10 instead of having 10, um, yeah, having 10 times hello. Then I just get this uh, 10 mark right here because this has been uh, run 10 times. And now we also saw how to create for loops. And if you are, yeah, if, if you know Java, then this is uh, definitely not uh, un unfamiliar to you. JavaScript has nothing to do with Java. You cannot do the same things in JavaScript as you can in Java and, uh, and the other way around also. Um, there's, a, there's a story about the name. I will not tell you that today because I actually forgot most of it. So no, uh, let us now, I'll comment this part right here because now let us look at the, what, what can we actually declare? We have Booleans, so we have some variables right here. We have a Boolean, Boolean equal to true. So that is one type. These are called the native types. And then we have a, uh, then we can have a number and numbers that, that means both decimals and integers. They would the, yeah, we, it, it is the same number whether it's a decimal or not. So here, this can be a number, and then we, let us just uh, let us just duplicate this line on here, and then say a decimal number, but it is, it is still the same number, and it is on purpose I uh, do this, so you can see in just a minute that all of these types, or these two types are actually the same. Then we say a string, so that is used a lot, strings right here. If I could hit the right button, a string. And then we can say let another string, another string equal to another string like this. And then we can do something cool, which is called uh, type of, if we call type of, we can also have something, uh, we can also have undefined actually, let me just set, but that's um, uh, not set. So if we have a variable that is not set at all, if we don't mention the type, that would be uh, totally equivalent us uh, of writing undefined like this. There's also something called null and null and undefined are not the same, they just, they're just used to express the same thing actually. Undefined means that uh, you have not set the type. So you have you, know, you have forgotten to write this equal sign. That's that is usually what it means. Null usually means that, okay, you have chosen this to be null uh, uh, on purpose. Um, but null, if you're in doubt of whether you should use null or not, then don't use null, use undefined instead. Um, it is also, when you go, you move on to TypeScript, then it's actually uh, part of the type that you can say that this is actually allowed to be undefined or not. Um, but enough about that. Um, so let me just write console.log right here. And then I want to write, then I want to say type, the type of the variable is, and then we write plus type of, and then we say uh, the variable that could be not set for instance. Let us just start with this one. The type of the variable is undefined. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Of course, I could do this with each of these variables right here, but we just learned something cool. We just learned that there's something called an, uh, a for loop, and we can also create an array. Array is also a type. That is one of the more advanced type. That's an object type that we have in, uh, in JavaScript, while these are premises that we have right here. Let us try to create an array. 
Uh, I would say this is a const, and you should always use const, actually. If you're in any doubt whether you should use const or let start with const, then when you get an error that, uh, that you actually have to change the value anyway, then you will change it to let instead. So const my array equal to, and here I use uh, squared brackets like this, and then I just mention all of my variables right here, a boolean, because I can actually, um, it's not like with Java where there's generics and you can only type uh, put in the same type uh, in, in, in these uh, arrays. Of, of course, with Java, you can just say that this generic type should be an object, of, and then you can put in whatever. Uh, but here, you, you, here in JavaScript, uh, yeah, per default, you can just put in whatever you want to in this array right here. So I just add a lot of weird stuff that has nothing to do with each other. Uh, a string like this, and then another string like that. So now I have created an array right here, and then I want to say my array dot for for each for each right here. Yes, that is actually a method that we can call an array. So there are, there are multiple ways of actually going through this. Now I'm actually using something called an error function. So that means that I'm actually, this is the element. So this is my my variable, which is uh, right here. And then we have the error function right here. And I can say print out. And this is, a, this is how we actually show that this is an error function. We have the input uh, argument or parameter right here. So we have the yeah we have the parameter right here, and then we have the uh, and then we have the content of the function right here. So that means that for each element in, inside my array, for each variable that I have in there, then I will actually run this code right here, and then I will uh, call my then I'll say type of my my variable. So that means that I will actually get all of the types of my variables out in the log. If I am right, let's go look. Okay, so what happened right here? So we have uh, the type of the variable is number, that's quite cool, quite and the type of the variable is string. Of course, it's a little bit difficult to see um, which is which, so of course we could just write not set, and then we can duplicate this line right here. We can say a boolean, we can say a number, we can say a decimal number, and of course, these types will both end up with number, but we'll just do that, a string. Another string, like this. Let's go see what actually happens now. So now we can see the first one is an undefined Boolean number, number, string, string. So it is exactly as um, as we expected this result to be right here. Now let us try to look at an object, or uh, it's also something called a map, uh, but an object and a map, and a, and a map is actually the same thing. Um, one thing about the arrays, actually, before we continue, that is that we can access one element in the array, if you want to, by writing my uh, array, and then you can get an element by just naming the index right here, so this is index 3, and it starts with 0, so that's 0, 1, 2, 3, so that, that means that this will be the one that we will actually get, and this, and now I remove type of, so that means now I will actually get the result of this uh, variable right here, let us go look back again here, now we get 10. Cool. And yeah, so that's how the arrays work. And if you want to have the, the, the size of the, um, the array, uh, length, sorry, the length of the array, how, how, how many elements do we have inside this uh, array, then we just say uh, dot length, and then we get six right here. And of course, we should have written length like this, and then we can see it right here. And this is live server that enables us to, to just reload automatically, and it's quite cool. So it, it tells the browser to please reload this page, it's old. And uh, yeah, and then it's done. Then um, what else should we, uh, yeah, that with the arrays, if you want to add a new ele element, then you can say, uh, yeah, zero. So you can actually just say my array, and then you can say my array dot length. Because this would actually go to the this will actually go to the end of this run right here, and then we will actually add one element, and then we'll say this is the new element like this, and then we will actually see what the size now is. Now it's seven, so we just added one element in the end of the array by doing this. So this would be the same as writing uh, six right here, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and then six right here. And again, we have the same result. So that's quite good. Arrays are cool, arrays are easy to use, and they're very flexible. So let us delete all of this. Because um, because now we want to create an object, my object right here. And the object is created by using curly brackets like this. And in here, we will then have the, the, the field names and then the value. So we can have, maybe this could be a spaceship. So we will have a... Uh, 
Uh, spaceship, this could be the, uh, yeah, the name of the spaceship, yeah, type, uh, spaceship type. And of course, you are, uh, of course you can use camera case right here, or snake case, or whether, whatever you want to. And we can say this type, this is a round type, and then we can have a captain. This captain could be Mike, right here, and yeah, then that's our object. Let us try to, um, and that means that then, then we can actually deal with this object and we can change the fields if we want to. But let us first actually print this one out right here, my object. So now we're printing out the object. And here we can say that we have one spaceship and we have a captain and it's an object. Yes, that's fine. Spaceship type, uh, captain right here. If you just want to print out a string, then you can write json.stringify like this. It's a built-in function and now you just get the string now you don't, don't get the, the object representation and it looks a bit nicer so we're spaceship type round captain mike so i'm pretty happy with that now i want to create another object so i want to have my object too and in, inside this object i actually want uh, the same uh, i want the same fields as i have up here and the same values then i can use something called the spread operator three dots and then the first object like this and then I can add a new stuff. Then we can add some cargo. This could be uh, onions like this. So now we have added cargo plus the fields from from this object right here. Let me just add a number two to that. And now we have this field right here. That's pretty. Uh, now we have this object right here. That's quite cool. But Mike, what if you want to change the fields? You told us that was possible. Yes, we can do that. Um, we can do that two different ways. We can use the dot. We can use the dot notation. Then we can say dot uh, captain. This could then be Susan. So now Susan is flying the ship instead of me. Let us see what happens now. Yes, look, the captain is now Susan instead. That's quite cool. I could also change something else, my object too. Then I can use the squared notation instead. That means I can use uh, this. Yeah, so I can use this uh, this way instead by using the, uh, the square brackets, and then I can name my object, which is um, spaceship type, spaceship type like this, and then I can set that to something else, like it could be a pyramid spaceship instead, pyramid like this. And let us see, now we are actually flying a pyramid. That's quite cool. And uh, yes, and, and it, it needs to be, you need to uh, mention it by a string. So we have a string index right here. That is objects. So now we know what an array, array is. We know what an object is. We know about all the primitive types. Um, now we also want to know about functions. We have actually already looked a bit at functions, but we can actually create a new function. A function, um, print out uh, stuff. And then it takes some uh, variable that could be some, uh, yeah, uh, some objects, some object right here. And this is one way to actually create a function uh, like this. I'll just place it in the top. And then we will add this console right here. Then we will print it out. Then we'll say JSON stringify. And then we'll say some objects right here. We can also return stuff. Um, um, maybe we can return a string representation of it. That could actually be quite nice, couldn't it? So that, this means that we will actually uh, say uh, const my string equal to the, the string representation. This this is the string representation of the, the object. So that means we, we are concatenating that part with the JSON part, and then we are locking that part out, my string. And we're also returning my string. So you can see we actually not we're not giving the, the signature in the top, as you will see in, in most languages, actually. We're not saying that this should actually return a string. And that is exactly why we actually need something like TypeScript. TypeScript com uh, uh, compiles into JavaScript afterwards, but in TypeScript, you would actually give which type uh, is returned in the top right here. You would also give which uh, type of uh, object should actually be right here, because uh, no one actually knows right here what's, what should this object be. Should it be a number? Should it be an object? Should it be an array? What, what should it be? It is not type safe, as we say. That means that you would get the, a lot of errors runtime instead of compile time. And we want the errors compiled time and that is why we want TypeScript but this video is not about TypeScript I just want to mention it to you now we want to use this function print out stuff right here so um so let me just well, okay what should we print out I'll down in bottom right here and then I'll say print out stuff and then we will say my object like this and we will also print out the other object the first object the second object. So now we print out both objects. Let's see what happens. This is the string representation. Then we get the first object, and then we also get the second object. 
Thank you very much. Cool function because um, that was quite cool. This printout stuff could have been written with like an error notation instead, and that is what we will do. Um, so we will say const uh, print stuff, and then we will just say some object again, and then we will say oh sorry, uh, we will just mention a variable. So this yeah, so this is our error function right here, and then we need to say which parameters can we give it. And again, just some object, and then we create this error right here, and then we create the content of the function right here. And I misspelled it a little bit, so we'll just say some, and then we will say, I'll just copy the code from here. Copy, paste. By string, this is a, this is the error function in action, like this. So then the string is a little bit different, and then we return, and then of course we need to use some uh, right here. And then instead of print out stuff, then we will, yeah, we can just let them be at, let me say print stuff equal to, and then we say uh, print stuff, and we say object, the first object, my object, right, my object two, and then we say my object like this, and semicolon, semicolon, let us see what happens now. My object one is not defined. Oh, yeah. This is the error function in action, and here we see the one object, and this is the error action uh, function in action. This is the other object right here. Spaceship type, round, Captain Mike, and then we have some other string representations right there. So this is actually how easy it is. So that is actually JavaScript. Uh, yeah, functions, functions and objects and arrays and primitives. It is actually that easy. Yes, it is. Now we have something else that we would like to, I would like to show you, and that is the package.json file right here. This is where we can actually we can actually use Node to run this because right now we have we've used uh, we've used the, the browser to run all of this. What if we want to use Node? It is quite easy to use Node to run this. I'll just press Control and then the Danish A. The, that's how I bound to my terminal. You can also find the, the you can also just press Terminal in the top. Uh, find it in the menu. Uh, so now I'm inside my JavaScript uh, demo, then I can write node, and then I can say my.js. That means that I can actually run the whole JavaScript inside the node engine. And I get the same output as if we're in the browser. That is quite lucky, right? And of course, that's because they follow the same standard. So that is uh, not luck. It is uh, how it is, it is designed, of course. So another thing is that uh, at some point, then you have a lot of scripts and a lot of things you want to do. And it's a little bit annoying to sit and write stuff in the console again and again and again. You don't want to sit and write node and then my.js. That is where the package.json file come in, because here you can run scripts. So we have a script section right here, as you can already see. I'm going to delete to, to delete this file because I'm going to show you how it is created. So I'll delete the, the package.json file. npm init. That is uh, how we create the package.json file. Enter. And then if you don't want to, you can actually just press enter all the way through because it comes with a lot of weird uh, default things that we want to um, that we want to fill out. And then we say yes. And refresh. Here we've got the package file right here. And here we get a script section. And this is why we do it. We want the script se section right here. So I want to create a script. I want to say uh, run uh, my JS or something like that. And here I'll write note, note, and then I'll write my.js like this. Because now my colleagues can actually see that I have actually created this cool program that can do some things, and it's um, yeah, and and this is the command right here. And if I want to run it, I can just go to npm scripts in the left side. Here's my package.json file. Then I can click on run my uh, like this. I can press the play button right there. Note my.js. There is an error, missing scripts. Oh, that's because I need to refresh. Yeah, that was before before we deleted it. Yeah, so I'll press again. I'll press the play button again. Sorry. Here we got now it runs. So here we have this. This is the string representation in the bottom. I'm quite happy. I can also right click inside my ID and I can press one run script like this. And then I get my result again. That's JavaScript. Now get on and learn some TypeScript also. And then learn some Vue. Then learn some React. Learn, learn, then learn some Angular. Or just stick to one of them. It's up to you. I hope uh, you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you again very soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.